So what's up guys for my first review I'm gonna be reviewing the standard bear the best of the best action films ever made um, It's gonna be Rambo first blood um, What more is there to say about this movie? I love this movie Rambo the Rambo films one two three four and five are the best action films ever made I mean You compare the action films of today to the action films of back then, they don't compare at all, man. The action films of the 80s and 90s are a million times better, you know what I mean? And I wanted to start off by reviewing the best action films ever made, which are the Rambo films. There we go. I'm going to be reviewing them all one by one. I'm going to try to do each and every single one of these films justice, verbally. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of facts. Anything that I, that I say, you're pretty much going to have already heard already. You're pretty much going to know already. But I'm going to just run through it anyways. I hope that you guys enjoy. Rambo First Blood, man. I mean, this movie is just, it's a legendary classic for me. This was the first American film that I ever saw as a kid. I remember, I remember seeing this film when I was around five or six years old. As a matter of fact, Stallone was the last choice to place Rambo because it was dubbed a cursed project no one wanted to do it because i mean it was just so controversial of a topic for a movie to be made you know what i mean vietnam it was just such a such a sensitive and emo emotional subject and it wasn't it wasn't necessary there were there were some of the guys that, that were offered the roles to but they turned it down for many reasons i mean burt reynolds al pacino the list goes on stallone was the last choice and lucky for us he is Rambo. Stallone was the guy that I see as Rambo. St without, I don't see anyone being able to play the character as good as Stallone because of, of his acting, because of the physical pain that he goes through before making a Rambo film. By that, I mean getting in shape, lifting weights, going through absolute hell to look as the best that he can physically for the role, which is a Vietnam veteran returning to the States and being labeled a baby killer being labeled a murderer, a loser, a fraud. They don't give him work. They don't give him a job. He He's looked at as shit, you know? They spit on him. No one gives a fuck about Rambo. And that's a character that I can really relate to in many ways in real life. Uh, but that's a, that's a topic for a different uh, different time. But uh, let's get into it, you know? Rambo returning to the States. He's looking for his uh, one of his friends, one of his last remaining friends from, his, from the elite squad, from the elite group. Um, he finds out that he, he, he's dead by this lady. He walks off on the road alone, depressed, sad, um, knowing that he's pretty much the last one. He's the last one from his team. You know what I mean? And, um, out of nowhere, the sheriff comes in his car and then he starts, he starts picking on Rambo for no reason. You know, he starts to throw him out of, out of town, calling him a drifter, pretty much just calling him trash. You know what I mean? And then Rambo says, why are you pushing me? Why are you pushing me? I haven't done anything to you. And then he's like, what'd you say? First off, you don't ask questions around here. I do. And secondly, we don't want guys like you in this town. Drifters. First thing you know, we got a whole bunch of guys here that like you. That's why. So he leaves him pretty much in the middle of nowhere. He's kicking him out of the town. Rambo comes back. He comes back. Then the cop just starts, starts picking. He starts poking at the devil. He starts poking and poking and poking and poking at him. And... Eventually, he doesn't know who he's fucking with. He's fucking with the greatest combat soldier ever made. As you will come to hear, Rambo, the unstoppable killing machine, which is my favorite. Right off the bat, before I get more into the movie, I, want, I just want to say a couple of things. Stallone, my favorite movie character of all time. I mean, my favorite actor of all time. John Rambo, my favorite movie character of all time. John Rambo, my favorite action childhood hero of all time. John Rambo. Is the greatest character ever, the, the 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 greatest combat soldier ever in the history of combat. The funny thing about all this is, is that no one knows who Rambo is. None of these sheriffs, none of these guys. Sheriff Teasel is the name of the guy that keeps fucking with Rambo. He has no idea who he's messing with and who he's provoking. So he basically arrests Rambo for no reason for not leaving town. He gets arrested. He, he gets he gets abused, man. He gets physically hit by in the back with a nightstick, bah, right to the back many times. They try to shave him dry without any soap or any cream. Um, they 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 grab a giant hose and then they they they, they throw a bunch of water in cold water on him and they just treat him like an animal. They treat him like shit. You know what I mean? 
And then one thing leads to another. Rambo just snaps. He just had enough of it. He, he kicked. He, he just beats the shit out of all these fucking police guards that aren't shit. He rolls through them. He fucking tries to gouge out the sheriff, the sheriff's eyes. He fucking just elbows the motherfucker on his way out. Gets his knife. Like I said, elbows the motherfucker on the way out. Gets on a motorcycle. And then you got a pretty awesome car chase. Car and motorcycle chase, I mean. As they keep on going. They keep on going on the road. Then eventually Rambo, Rambo and the car fall off. And then there's all these rocks. Rambo's climbing up. Sheriff Teasel gets out and he says, I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. You're finished. You've gone as far as you're going to go. And that's where he's mistaken because we're in Rambo's house now. We're in the forest. We're in the woods. We're in his turf now, which is the big mistake that they're making. Um, from there on, it kicks into, into action gear, as I like to say. Action gear. Here's where we get, we get, we get it stepping up a notch. We already had some good action with the guards. Now we're going to escalate a little bit more. So from here on, Rambo gets cornered. He's on top of the cliff. He's trying to climb his way down as the helicopter's coming. Golf is coming with a sniper. He's trying to snipe him off from the from the from the helicopter. And Rambo sees it and he realizes that, that the only thing that he can do is just throw himself off. Throw himself off of the cliff. And then hopefully survive. And he does survive. And here's a fun fact. As Stallone is falling, he actually broke his ribs. When you see him, when you see him land and he's he's screaming, ah! That's actually Stallone. That's actually Stallone. He broke his ribs. That's actually him being in pain, which is amazing. And um, this movie was not an easy movie to make, just saying. Um, but yeah, from here on, Rambo, Rambo, just, Rambo doesn't want to hurt these guys. He doesn't want to hurt these guys, but he, they keep on pushing him and pushing him to the point where he just has to do something. And he didn't even mean to kill golf. He grabs a rock and he throws out the helicopter as a way to, as a way of saying, fuck off, like, leave me, leave me the fuck alone. And then he falls out of the helicopter because he doesn't have a seatbelt because he's being a fucking dumbass. You know, so it wasn't Rambo's fault. He was only defending himself. So one thing leads to another. Boom. He's uh, he's stitching up his wound or that he got when he fell on the tree trunk. He's stitching it up. Some great practical blood use. He's stitching it up. Then um, one thing leads to another. They, they, the cops find Rambo. Rambo's trying to turn him, not turn himself in, but he's just trying to give them a warning, saying, leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. I don't want to hurt you guys. I don't want to hurt anyone anymore. It's not my fault. You know, he's just basically giving, giving the, the sheriffs, the cops, one last warning, saying, leave me the fuck alone. And then one thing leads to another, they shoot him in the head, and then he's, that's why he, you see him with the bandana around his head to protect, it, to protect his head from blood falling out. Um... So, here's one of the most amazing scenes that you're ever going to see in a movie is where they're, 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 they're trying to hunt Rambo, quote-unquote, you know what I mean? And in reality, it's actually Rambo that's hunting them one by one because they have no idea who they're fucking with. And so now, they just woke up the beast. They just woke up the devil. And now they're going to feel his wrath. So, one by one, he just starts making these um these. These, these these tags, right? These sharp tags out of wood. Boom, boom, boom. You can see him with his knife cutting it up. He's got dirt all over his body. He's got leaves all over his back to camouflage himself. Remember, Rambo is a Vietnam veteran. He's trained for these type of situations. They're in his playground now. So back then in town, that's their playground. Here, we're actually in Rambo's playground. So here's where shit gets really, really good. <clears throat> one by one, they spread out. <clears throat> And they all start looking for Rambo. The first guy that Rambo gets, he gets him in the fucking uh, in the fucking leg with one of those wooden wooden sharp tacks. And then the funny thing about this is that that guy's name is Mitch in the movie, and he was shooting himself all along. He knew that Rambo was a trained soldier. He knew that there was something about Rambo that was off. He knew that he had some type of fighting experience. He knew that Rambo was a somebody. He wasn't just a nobody, and he's the first one to get it. So then he starts screaming. Then shit goes on. He takes another motherfucker out. He jumps from a fucking tree trunk, gets him, breaks, dislocates his fucking arm. Then another sheriff comes to try to help out his buddy. He ends up shooting, trying to shoot Rambo. He ends up shooting his own partner's arm, which is hilarious. Then the guy's like, I got him. I got him. Then he keeps running and running. And then boom, he gets it like, uh, like about what? Eight or 10 fucking wooden tacks to his legs. And he gets fucking impaled, you know? So he, the beautiful thing about this is, is, Going in, they thought that he was a nobody, that they could just push him around and, and talk all this shit and do all these things to him because they think that he's a fucking nobody. And that's the beautiful thing is here. They're finding out that 
they they fuck with the wrong man. They fuck with the wrong man, and you're fucking with John fucking Rambo, and you don't fuck with John fucking Rambo, or you're dead. No, they're not actually gonna die here, but you, you you get the point. You don't fuck with Rambo and just walk away like nothing happened. You know what I mean? So here we go. Then he gets another motherfucker, ties him up to a fucking tree trunk, and then and then um, Teasel, which is the last guy that's not hurt yet, he goes in, he sees it, and then Rambo just out of nowhere he just comes up and puts a knife on his throat. And he, this is one of the most memorable and one of the most amazing lines in action movie history. In movie history, for me, as 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 you'll come to know, I am the biggest Rambo fan. He comes up and he puts it, uh, the knife on his throat, and he says some of, one of the one of the most memorable lines in movie history. I could have killed them all. I could have killed you. In telling you the law, I'll give it to me. Don't push it. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. Let it go. Let it go. And then the guy just fucking, he just, he just gets on his fucking knees. He gets on his fucking ass and he just starts crying. He starts fucking crying, dude, because he shit himself. He realized that Rambo could have killed him. Rambo could have killed them all, but he let him go. And that's when they realized that they didn't fuck with just anyone. And that's what I love so much about this movie is every single action scene that you get, every single line, every single quote, every single time Rambo speaks, it means something. Like it's a huge, it's a big deal. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a big deal. And when Rambo speaks, you listen. Because that's what makes this one of the best action films ever made, is the fact that every single action scene is meaningful. It's not just for entertainment. They have, they, have, they serve a purpose, and they have emotion behind the action. It's like, you're rooting every single time Rambo gets one of these motherfuckers, or hurts these motherfuckers, or every time Rambo does something regarding action, you really, really feel for him. You really support him. You really, you're like, yeah, yeah, because... You can feel for the character. The character has emotion behind him. And you really, really connect with him. Since the beginning, you connect with him and you feel bad for him because of the way that he's treated and because of everything that they did to him. So all the action just has a bigger impact and a bigger... It's a bigger deal, that's what I'm trying to say. So one thing leads to another. Rambo R- R- Rambo's out there. He's on the fucking... Um, he's, on, he's, on, he, he's living in a cave, pretty much. We're not living, hiding in a cave. Samuel Troutman. Uh, his mentor, his leader, the one that taught him everything he knows, comes into Warren Sheriff Teasel, saying, look, I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. As in saying that, and then he goes on to explain who and what Rambo is. He's the best combat soldier that he's ever seen. He says, in, in Vietnam, we teach our soldiers to stay alive in the line of duty. And then Sheriff Teasel's like, no shit, I never thought of that. And then he was like, you want a war you can't win? Uh, and then he's like, you're telling me that 200 men against your trained boy is a no one situation for us? And he's like, Salman Trauma's like, if you, send in that, if you send in that many, don't forget one thing. And he's like, what's that? A good supply of body bags. And I love that. I love the line where he's just telling us that Rambo's the best. He's the best with guns. He's the best with knives. He's trained to ignore pain. He's trained to eat things that would make a Billy Goat puke. He is trained for war. He is trained to live off the land. He is the best. In Vietnam, his, his job was to dispose of enemy personnel, period. To kill, period. To win by attrition. I love that. I love that. Now, sure, I had to botch a couple of words, but you get the line. You know the line. I just love it so much. It's just so cool because it just shows you, it tells you verbally. Now, in Rambo 2, we're going to see all those skills. All those things that Samuel Trauma just said and all the things that I just said are going to get good put to the test in Rambo 2. So you just sit there and wait. You just sit there and wait. Trust me. Rambo 2, everything that Samuel Trotman says is going to get put to the test and is going to be proven to be 100% true. So one thing leads to another. Trotman tries to talk to Rambo through through the radio. And he's telling him to, to turn himself in, to, to that you can't have him. You can't have have him ending other people's lives. You can't have him killing other innocent people. And he's like, there are no friendly civilians, you know. And he's right because no, everyone treats him like shit. Everyone just treats him like dirt. So there are no friendly civilians to Rambo, which then again, you can relate to the character. You really can. So Rambo is smart. And, uh, Rambo just ends the conversation with saying they drew first blood, not me. As in saying that they started this, this war. They started this shit. And now he's going to end it. He didn't want he All he wanted was something to eat. But the man kept pushing, sir, as Rambo says. So they lead to another... Rambo's smart enough to know that he's being tracked down, and Samuel Troutman, 
his mentor, of course, knows that Rambo knows that he's being tracked down. Rambo knows. And one thing leads to another, those 200 men, those 200 soldiers, or weekend warriors, as I like to say, um, get, sent, get sent in to Rambo. And then one thing leads to another, they shoot a, they shoot a missile, boom, with the bazooka. It's a bazooka, right? Yeah, bazooka. Then they think that Rambo's dead, and they're off here taking pictures, being fucking clowns, being fucking pieces of shit, you know, for killing a bit on that. Tizo gets in, he gets pissed off at him and tells him, you clean it up, you clean up this fucking mess, dig up his body. And he's like, shit, to the fucking captain of the fucking uh, weekend, weekend warriors. Um, and this is, it, it, it's just, here we go. Now Rambo's pissed because remember what Rambo told him in the beginning. He said, I'll give you more you won't believe, forget what happened, let it go, let it go. But the man kept pushing and now Rambo is coming for his ass. He's coming dead straight forward for his ass as soon as he's out of his cave. Um, one thing leads to another, Rambo's trying to find his way out of his cave, and it's just so beautiful shots, man, beautiful shots, it's real, it's real, there's no CGI, there's no fake shit, it's real, it's legitimately him crawling in a fucking cave with all this water, and he's just trying to find a way, he lights a match, so that he can use it as a, uh, as a way to maneuver his way through the tunnels to try to find a way out. And then, as, as, as that scene is happening, there's also another scene at the bar happening between Teasel and Troughton, where he's saying, where he's saying that, uh, I wanted to kill that kid. I want to kill that kid so badly that I could taste it. And then Troutman replies with, I said, well, with that badge. And he's like, well, what did you figure out from all this, Colonel? What would you figure out for this? If you had him for, uh, if you had him face to face, what would you do? Give him a, a hug and a big sloppy kiss? Or would you have blown his brains out? And then Troutman, you can see that look on his face that he knows who he trained. He knows that Rambo is still alive because, like, once again, Rambo is an unstoppable killing machine. He is the best. He is the best of the best. There's no one better than Rambo. And here we go. You can see that look on his face that he knows that Rambo is alive and that Rambo is coming straight for him. He knows. He knows. And then he replies, I couldn't answer that unless I met him face to face. And then Tizo replies, well, that's just it, huh? We're not gonna get to find out. <laughs> at least, at least so he thinks. At least so he thinks. So one thing leads to another. Rambo gets out of the cave. He gets on top of a truck, knocks, it, throws the guy out, and then he got, and he's, he's making his way right back to the town. There's a cop car coming his way, and they're trying to shoot the mother. They're trying to shoot Rambo. Rambo gets pissed. He takes a truck and just rams it to the side of the fucking car. The car ends up crashing with a little mini explosion. Now I don't know if the guys died. I'm pretty sure that they live. They, they're just gonna be hurt or injured, of course. But one thing leads to another, and this brilliant, this brilliant score that starts playing when, 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 we are right back in the beginning, right back in the beginning where, where, how it all started on the bridge with that brilliant Jerry Goldsmith score playing, man, on the background. It's so it gets you hyped up and it gets you like, fuck yeah, yeah, he's coming for his ass, yeah, Rambo's back, Rambo's coming, and then he starts playing. And then he goes over these fucking cop cars that start shooting at him. He doesn't give a fuck. He just goes through them. And then he lands on a fucking gas station, gets the fucking M60 from the back, lights up the fucking gas station, throws a fucking lighter, it blows up, and then that's 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 the cool that's where it starts. That's the beginning of the end. He starts destroying the whole fucking town that this motherfucker, Sheriff Teasel, is hired to protect. He gets paid to keep it safe and to keep it protected. He just starts destroying everything, bro. Every single store. Everywhere. He just starts shooting. He starts shooting at the lights so that he can stealth. And that's the one thing that you'll come to learn about me. Because I love seeing Rambo in stealth mode. I love, love seeing Rambo in stealth mode. Him moving from here to there without being noticed. Without going completely unnoticed. And I love that. That's one of the coolest things about Rambo, in my opinion. He keeps moving. He keeps moving. Shooting at the lights. And then he blows up a fucking... He glitches in a fucking building where you see all this powder and all this gunpowder. And all this shit, he just starts breaking the fucking boxes. He starts opening the cans with the butt of his knife. Bah! And he just starts emptying out the powder everywhere. All over the sword. All over the sword. And I love that. And then he just, and then with, once again, that brilliant Jerry Goldsmith score, which adds a lot of a lot of awesomeness to the scenes. You know, to the scenes. It adds a bigger impact with the score. And the thing about these scenes is you support, you're not against Rambo. You don't look at Rambo as a bad guy for doing this because you understand him. You, you see where he's coming from by doing all this stuff because he, he warned the man. He warned the man to back off. He didn't want to back off. Point is, so he he comes, he, he, he puts all the powder there. He takes an M60, shoots it, 
And then that score starts playing. He runs away. Boom, big explosion. And Teasel's watching this. He's, he's up at the top of the police building. As, as you guys, of course, you guys see this movie many times. You guys know what I'm talking about. So he's there, and he's just taking a big, massive shit. So there's only one building left, and that's Teasel. That's the sheriff's department. So Rambo just goes with his M60. He notices that Teasel's up there in the building in the corner at the top. He just starts shooting the shit out of the fucking... He starts shooting the shit out of the fucking police station with his M60. He destroys everything, everything, every bit of glass, everything. He goes in nice and slow with his gun, and he's expecting Sheriff Teasel to make his way down or something. And then he realizes, and then he just runs. Sheriff Teasel fires. He gets under him and just shoots him in the fucking legs. Teasel falls down through the glass. Rambo walks slowly with his M60 pointing at him. He's ready to kill him. He's ready to kill him. He's ready to get him. And and Teasel, knowing the piece of shit that he is, the, the fucking asshole he is, go ahead and cruise some of our bitch. Do it. Do it. Do it. And then Trotman, Trotman was the one to save his life. Trotman comes in. He says, he says, Rambo, don't. Don't do it. And then Rambo, and then the entire police come, and they have the building surrounded. And this is, for people that say that Stallone can't act, you're full of shit. Just look at this scene. This scene is just brilliantly acted. One of the best dramatic pieces of work that you'll see, especially in the action world, in my opinion, just amazing. Rambo just breaks down. Um, the uh, first trauma just says that you are the last of an elite group. Don't end it like this. And then Rambo just, he just breaks it, man. It's every single bit of emotion and anger and rage that he was feeling inside, he just lets it out. He just had enough. He just breaks down. Um, and it's, it's completely normal for a man who's running for more and, and, being treated like shit and being treated the way that he was treated. It just it makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? Um, he just breaks down. He says, he says, nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. And he's like, and then he just, he just keeps breaking down. And he's like, who are they to protest me? Huh? Who are they? Like they've been me and been there. You know what the hell they're yelling about? <laughs> Back there at the flight, gunship. I'm going to charge you a million dollar equipment. Back here, I can't even get a job. Parking cars! <laughs> and, then he, and then he just breaks down, man. I come back to the States. I see those knights at the airport calling me baby killer and all kinds of bio crap. Who are they to protest me? And then he just breaks down crying. And he tells this story about how him and his friend were, were, were going to cruise to the tire fall. They were in Vegas. They, they stopped to get a couple beers. Rambo get a couple beers. This kid said... He wanted, he wanted to shoe, to shine the shoes, and he opened the box, and then the box exploded all over his friend's face. Rambo comes back from the beers, and then he's he's like, and then, and then Rambo sees his friend on the ground. He's like, I want to go home, John. I want to go home. I want to go home. And then John's like, oh, I can't find your fucking legs. I can't find your legs. And then it just shows the shit that he's been through, man, the shit that he's seen, that he's felt, and you really do feel bad for the character. And, yeah, man, it's just it's such an amazing movie. It's a great balance between action and drama. Rambo breaks down and he just hugs Troutman, which is like his father pretty much, his father in the war. Um, it's crazy, man. And and it's really just an amazing scene um, that you have to watch. I've watched First Blood a million times since I was a little kid, all the way to now, being 20 years old. And every time I watch it, I never get tired of it. I always love every single scene, even though I know what's happening. I know what's coming. It is, it is, to me, it is one of the best action films ever, ever made. Um, every single time that you get an action scene, it means something because the character has emotion. There's an emotional connection to the character, which makes you feel bad for him and makes you love him and makes you root for him. You know, um, he breaks down crying. He gets arrested, um, but it ends in a peaceful way. Teasel's still alive. He's being driven to the hospital. And it ends with that beautiful song, one of our favorite songs ever. It's a long road as, as he's walking. Um, one of the greatest one of the greatest acting performances of Stallone's career. One of the greatest movies ever. Um, what more is there to say about First Blood? You know, um, it's one of the greatest action movies ever. Jerry Goldsmith's music is amazing. The acting is amazing. The cast did great. Um, it was it's old school. Like like you will come to know about me. Old school is the best school. And I was born in the two thousands. And I love the eighties. I love the nineties. I love that style where it was all practical effects. They would try their ass off to make a movie great, you know, without the biggest budget in the world. This movie did not have the biggest budget in the world. And look how good it was, you know. First Blood is um, an all-time classic. One of our favorite movies ever. Um, these movies are the standard bearer. These movies are the bar. These movies set the bar, and these movies are the bar regarding action films. 
period. I don't care what you say. I don't care about Fast and Furious movies. I don't care about John Wick films, even though John Wick films are great, and I love Fast and Furious movies. They don't compare to, to, to John Rambo. John Rambo is John Rambo. He's the best of the best. He's an unstoppable killing machine. Um, great drama. I wanted to give you guys a little bit more facts, so... As we as we roll on with the, with these films, and I'll be reviewing all the Rambo films. Um, I'll give you guys more facts uh, regarding this film. This this film was not an easy film to make. It was, they had people had to go through hell to make this movie, especially Stallone working out there in the cold, and and him and him stepping off of after Rocky. This was his, his next big hit, his next big character. And before you guys ask, I do prefer Rambo over Rocky, but that's of course that's a that's a subject for a different time. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is the best movie reviewer on YouTube. Appreciate your time. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to leave a like. Thank you, guys. And remember, you don't fuck with John Rambo and lips to talk about it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.